Okay, so I have a Fluke 87 that was donated. It stopped working. So I'm on the DC volt range and I have a battery here. I get nothing when I test the battery. However, if I go to ohms and I short it, I get 0.2 ohms. That's perfectly fine. Diode range, perfectly fine. Continuity, good. Let's go over here to amps. And once again, the battery, six amps. That's perfectly fine. So the battery's in good shape. But when I go back to volts, absolutely nothing. Now if I go to min-max and turn peak on, I do see something. So it shows the peak of 3.9 volts and that can't possibly be because this is a nickel metal hydride cell maybe 1.3 volts at the most. Let's get another fluke out here. We'll put this one on volts. And we see 1.256 volts. So we know it can't be 3.9. It seems to be doing okay on the ohms, on the diode scale, and on the amp range. Now I know that the uh, 400 milliamp fuse is bad in this unit, but that should not affect the voltage range. I wonder if temperature works. Now, I don't have a type K thermocouple, but I should be able to short the leads together and get an approximation, 82. It, so temperature works perfectly fine. So what's going on with volts? I wonder if it's just the contacts in the rotary switch. I think I'll start with that. I'll go ahead and take this apart, take a look inside, and open up the switch and look at the contacts, maybe clean them, and uh, just like a rotary encoder or a mode select switch in a VCR, we'll go ahead and clean them and see if that helps. So let's go ahead and tear this thing apart. Okay, so here's an inside view of the Fluke 87. I've got it opened up, and I'll just go ahead and uh, scroll it past the screen very slowly. You can take a look in here and see if anybody sees any components that are damaged. I took a look in here and everything looks absolutely perfect. I don't see any bad parts whatsoever. I've already got the LCD display off of this unit. And everything looks great on that side. Let's flip it over. We'll take a look at the back side. Maybe one of those plate throughs has gone bad, I'm not sure. But everything looks absolutely great. So I think the first thing that I'm gonna do is go ahead and remove this rotary encoder, the mode select switch as it is. We'll look at the contacts in here and maybe go ahead and clean and polish the contacts and see if we can get this back to life. Because like I said, the, the 400 milliamp fuse here is blown, but the 11 amp fuse over here is good. Now these should only affect the current measurements. They shouldn't affect the voltage measurement here. So common to this pin is 400 milliamp measurements. Common to this is the 10 amp and it goes through an 11 amp fuse. So let's go ahead and pop open that encoder assembly. We'll take a look in there and see what it actually looks like. Okay, so here's a look at the rotary encoder, the select switch or the mode select switch. And a couple of things I find odd is that there's almost no use on some of these sliders here, some of these contacts. So like on these, you can tell they've been used quite heavily. They have very deep scratches in them. This one's barely making contact. This one, I can't see anything on it. This one as well. I mean, they have to be there for some reason, right? 
they wouldn't just put these on the board and they never use them. So here's a look at the back side of the encoder. It just has four sets of sliding contacts. And I noticed that some of these are bent back. Maybe they're not making the best connection. They're all bent back a little bit. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and polish these up and I'm gonna go ahead and give them just a little bit of spring pretension just so they make better contact with the circuit board. I don't think I'm gonna put any dielectric on there because this is completely dry at this time. These things have been known for their robustness and I don't want it picking up grease, dirt, grime. There's no kind of a seal on here to prevent dirt and dust intrusion into here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and polish the contacts up down here and we'll go ahead and clean these up, wipe them off really good and put it back together and see if we get any different results. Okay, so I've got the contacts all polished up on here. You see they're nice and clean. And I went ahead and bent these up just a bit and also polished the tips of them. So let's put it back together and see if we get better results at this point. Okay, so I've done some checks. I put this back together and I still got nothing. I've made a note of where the sliders are and I've checked on both sides of the board, they're making good contact over here. And I've come to the conclusion that this resistor network is bad. I have no continuity from pin one to any other pin. It should have about 10 million ohms from pin one to pin two right here. And I get absolutely no voltage measurement. But if I put my voltmeter in the volt range, my Fluke 117 and measure from pin one to pin two, I do see a reading up here on the display when I have it installed. Let me show you what I mean. Okay, so I'm gonna tip this up. You see the volt is at zero. I actually have 12 volts going into this unit right now, and I have my other voltmeter on the volt range, so it has an 11 million ohm input. And if I connect pin one to pin two, you can see that I read 11.89 volts on the display. There we go, on the second voltmeter I have 11.87 volts. So it looks like I just need to add a resistor to make up for the broken resistor network that's on this board. I'm figuring about seven and a half to 10 million ohms is gonna get me back to where I need to be. So I'm gonna try some various resistor values and see if we can get this thing back up and running once again. Okay, well I have dug through my box of resistors and I have found a 10 million ohm resistor, a 10 meg ohm resistor, that when I place it in the circuit, reads 11.98 to 11.99 volts. And that's close enough. It's to within one or two hundredths of a volt. Now I do have it on some test leads and just, it's so sensitive by me just touching the test leads, you can see the voltage kind of fluctuate just because of the capacity. Capacitance. So I'm just gonna go ahead and tack that resistor on the circuit board and for my use I think it's gonna be good enough. Well, I certainly think that's gonna be close enough. So I've got a 12 volt power supply here my 115 and my 117 read exactly 12. The 87 reads 12.02 volts. That's two one hundredths of a volt. That's pretty doggone close. It's to within one or two percent. It's actually teetering on 12.01 right now. So anyhow, I just need to go ahead and order a 400 milliamp fuse for the current. I went ahead and tested the AC as well. It seems to be pretty doggone close with the other ones. I'll go ahead and put that up too. So here's some different voltages across the spectrum. 30 volts, it's to within one or two one hundredths. Let's dial it down to about three volts and see what we get here. Wow, almost perfect. Within one one hundredth of a volt of the other meters. Let's go up to, uh, let's go up to about 20 volts here. Well, all three, absolutely perfect. Let's get some AC into it now and see if it reads AC volts correctly. Okay, I've got this plugged into my Variac right now and the voltage isn't that stable, but an, unfortunately that's what I have to live with. So you can see they're all within about the same voltage right now. I've got three volts, 3.4 volts are all about the same. Let's kick it up to about 12 volts and see what happens. 12.6. All three pretty steady. Let's go ahead and give it about 35, 40 volts right now. Pretty doggone close. So let's take it up to about 80 volts. And we'll take it up to probably 140, 150 here. See what we can get out of it. Pretty close. So I'm pretty happy with that. I just need to get it back together once again. Order a replacement 400 milliamp current fuse. And I think we'll be back in business. There's some low voltage millivolt AC input. They're reading pretty close within a couple of millivolts. at such a low range. It's totally acceptable in my book. 
Well, there it is. Another unit saved from the recycle bin. Once again, I want to give my sincere thank you to those who have supported my channel with a donation via PayPal or by having me repair your unit. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to my channel and liking this video. It really does help my channel grow. You can follow me on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter at NorCal715. You can email me NorCal715videos at gmail.com. Go ahead and leave me a comment, a question, a concern down below. I try to read all the comments and respond when I have time. Remember, with your help, we can keep these things out of the landfill, out of the recycle bin, and out of the e-waste facility. Once again, thanks for watching this video. I really do appreciate it. Everybody have a great day. Bye-bye.